Good morning, guys, and welcome to Full Circle with Joyce. And that right there was the song Shaking My Head by Twin Voice, kicking us off this morning. Karibuni Tena to the show, hoping you had a wonderful weekend and are pumped and excited for the brand new week. And of course, I do have an inspirational word for you today. And it says, the quality of your life is the quality of your emotions. And that's by a guy named Tony Rob Robbins and you know certainly as we've talked a lot, a, a lot about a lot on this show our attitude to all sorts of things you know really determines the quality of our lives and that's exactly what Tony Robbins is saying and so you know even as you begin the week I know it's that time of the month that things are really beginning to stretch right and uh, hopefully you can be able to purpose that you're going to sort of harness and master your emotions and that will ultimately be able to help you get through whatever issue it is that you're facing in life so whatever it is you're going through today hopefully you're able to just put on a smile on your face and just you know tell yourself you know what i'm gonna make it through i'm gonna do it i'm gonna push forward and it shall be well with me with that said we're gonna get started with our show here on personal development monday and to begin with we want to talk about investing in the stock market this is so important for a lot of you who are really trying to i'm sure many of us have heard about having different sources of income and many of you are actually trying to pursue that but perhaps you haven't known how to go about it well my guest in studio today is linda kiraide who's a research analyst with apex africa uh, capital karibu sana to the show thank you Good. I'm excited about this topic. I personally am also very interested in, you know, figuring out how we can sort ourselves. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it's important for us to have multiple sources of income. That's yeah. actually something that Warren Buffett said. Yes. So, you know, maybe we can begin with the basics of the stock market, right? Yeah. So tell us why companies list in the first place mm -hmm. and how the public like me as an individual or you as a viewer, mm -hmm. can actually take ownership in these big companies? So uh, the stock market is uh, an exchange. Uh, it is an exchange where shares trade. And a share is a, a unit of ownership in a public company. So companies go public to raise money to fund their operations. Mm -hmm. And uh, they create shares, which now represent the units of ownership. And it is in these shares that uh, investors get to participate in uh, the trade. So uh, the market is driven by information. So uh, in an IPO where uh, the listed where companies uh, go public and uh, shareholders are able to buy the shares from the market, mm -hmm. uh, the after 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 the company has raised funds, the money their shares now trade openly, and given that information drives uh, the share price. Uh, you get, uh, you, ca you observe that at a certain point, the price is low and uh, with investor expectations, the price goes up or down. Okay. So it is uh, uh, this opportunity that uh, someone can use to buy at a low price and uh, sell when price goes high. All right. Yes. So how do we then know, you know, how do you assess which stocks to buy mm -hmm. and which ones not to buy? What are the fundamentals that someone should be looking at? The first thing uh, is uh, you need to have information. You need to do your homework, uh, gather knowledge on the which share is good for you. And uh, you need to look at performance. You read uh, annual reports, look at financials. So after you do this, you need to make sure that your timing is just right. Mm. So timing is everything. So what do you do? You look at shares or companies that are fundamentally sound. Mm -hmm. That is companies that uh, management structure is good, the corporate governance policy is sound. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at uh, strategy, uh, the products that the company is offering, all that should be in line with your goals. That you can see that this company is uh, trending towards better profitability, maybe double digit profitability. Okay. Also, you need to time the market, like uh, when the market is bearish. And a bear market is when prices are generally low. Okay. So everything is trading at a really cheap price. So that's the time to buy. Yes, that's the time to buy. Okay. So you buy when market is bearish, and uh, you wait. That you wait so that uh, you buy patiently, wait, but stay rational, stay informed. Mm -hmm. 
keep yourself abreast with uh, market information. Okay. Yes. All right. So buy when the prices are low. Yes. Not when you've had that your friend has this Kulada Kachek yeah. of 5K that <laughs> no. you suddenly you're like, ah, I need to buy. Yeah. No, no, no. You buy when the market is low. That's yes. called bearish. Yes. When it's high, it's bull bullish. bullish. Yes. Right. Okay. I'm kidding. But um, in terms of the Kenyan stock market then, how... How easy is it for anybody to sort of invest in it? Is there a minimum? That's usually the big question. Yes, yes. A lot of times people are like, well, I don't have, you know, that much money because the truth is there are people who are buying hundreds of thousands of stock, yes. you know, at a go. Yes. For those of us who cannot afford to do that, yes. um, maybe there's a young person watching, they've mm -hmm. saved some money somewhere. Is there a way for them, you know, with... I don't know, what would be the sort of minimum? Is there like a minimum that someone can invest in that would sort of make good sense for them, give them a good return? Uh, I would say there's no minimum amount required, uh, but most stock brokers usually set a minimum, maybe 5,000 shillings. Okay. Uh, it is affordable. Uh, with, with as little as 5,000, there are stocks that trade at four shillings, three shillings, mm -hmm. and they're good companies to buy. Mm -hmm. So you see you get a substantial number of shares. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what people need to know is that uh, we look at the return, that is the percentage return. You don't really look at the amount that you invest. So mm -hmm. if you buy a share at four shillings and it rises to five shillings, you look at that one shilling that you've gained. So you do a percentage return. That's how you determine whether you're making money. So you compare if you compare this to other other investment vehicles like bonds and T-bills, mm -hmm. that's how you know that you're making money. So it's not really about the the, the starting amount. Okay. Yes. And um, <laughs> okay, tell us about the allure of penny stocks. W what are those first of all? Penny stocks are uh, shares that trade below one shilling. So they trade uh, in cents. And uh, they are very lucrative and uh, attractive because uh, a small gains, small gains like a movement of even five cents means uh, a substantial return for the investor. Okay. The problem with penny stocks is that they are thinly traded. That is, they trade in very, very small volumes. So it's not really, it's not really possible to know what moves the the volumes. Also, they are subject to scamming that they are, people easily control the price because uh, small volumes m cause uh, substantial gains in price. Mm. Also, another thing to, thot to note about penny stocks is they are mostly from companies that are making losses or on the verge of a, a collapse. Right. So investors really need to be careful before they decide to invest in penny stocks. Okay. Yes. If you're just joining us, I'm talking to Linda Kiraide, who's a research analyst with do you say Apex or Apex? Apex. Okay, Apex Africa Capital. And we're talking about investing in the stock market. If you guys have any questions on this, please do let us know. Double two triple nine is the SMS line. We'd be more than happy to take in your questions and your feedback. We'll also have a post on our Facebook page at Switch TV uh, Kenya. You can also tweet us at Switch TV Kenya and also contact us on our Instagram handle, which is at Switch TV KE. Let us know, are you guys investing in the stock market? Is that something you're interested in? Have you learned anything about it? Um, and perhaps you have specific questions you'd like to ask again, double two, triple nine is the SMS line. Now, Linda, okay. So say I've decided, you know, I want to invest. Mm -hmm. Maybe I have like six K set aside somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, how do I start? Because I cannot go and personally, you know, yes. trade. Yes. So how, how, what do I need to do? Who do I need to go and see? So you will approach a stock broker. Uh, if you look online, there are very many stock brokers. And uh, when you get there, you will open a CDS account. Mm -hmm. This one trades uh, more like it's a, back, a bank account. The requirements are your ID, your PIN. And uh, from there, you start trading the shares. Mm -hmm. So the, the broker will assist you in uh, the share trade. They'll let you know when uh, volumes are there. They'll let you know uh, how much commission they charge. Basically, that is it. It costs, how much does it cost to open that CDS account? It's not, it doesn't cost. It doesn't cost. No, it's it free. Doesn't co it's free, yes. Okay, so yes. it's only your investment. Yeah, it's only your investment and you're charged a commission when you buy and when you sell. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just like a withdrawal in a bank account. Okay. It yes. sounds like there are actual people who have had to pay to to open the CDS account. That means that's false. That that was wrong. No. They shouldn't. They shouldn't pay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So 
how do we know like which brokers to go to? Is there a certain list somewhere someone can look at just to make sure that you're not, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> being yes. conned? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can look at the NSC website, that is the Nairobi Stock Exchange website, and also the CMA, that is the Capital Markets Authority website. They have a list of uh, authorized brokers. Oh my goodness. So here's a very sad story. One of my people here, mm -hmm. her name is Brenda, actually got conned. I think she had to pay 10,000 shillings to open an account. And so for anybody watching, <laughs> I really hope you're paying attention. Oh my goodness. Yes. That a C to open a CDS account, account yeah. is absolutely free. Na nyinyi wa Kenya wakufanya hizi tabia akijameni mwache mshindwe katika jina la Yesu. No, I'm not, but <laughs> my goodness. So it, it, it sounds like certainly we do have to do a lot of our own due diligence yes, yes, then sure. because there are a lot of people who are trying to manipulate the system. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, with that said then, when we look at a stock, is there a way to say, unfortunately, some of us can also be very impatient with mm -hmm. our investments. Mm -hmm. We want to see the return. Like maybe I invested yesterday. Mm -hmm. Someone else is in a different stock. They're already making money and mm -hmm. suddenly I start to panic and say, you know what, even me, I need my money to, mm -hmm. you know, be working for me right mm -hmm. now. Is there sort of an average, I don't know if any research shows like an average span of time over which an investment, you know, kind of needs to stay in place mm -hmm. for it to issue a good return? Uh, I'll start by saying uh, Warren Buffett says that the stock market is a device for transferring wealth from the impatient to the patient. So first of all, you will need to be patient. I would say at least, give it at least one year so that you are, you're able to measure the return against uh, government securities, which are basically risk-free. Risk -free. Mm -hmm. So if uh, the T-bill is at 7%, give it at least a year so that you, you're able to get a return higher than that 7%. Right. So at a basic, at a basic minimum, I'd say an year, okay. depending on uh, your investment. For T-bills, bonds, even regular stocks. Yes, yes. So that okay. at least you're able to make sure you're getting the minimum return in the market. Okay. Yes. And again, just tell us about the difference between T-bills and stocks. Because mm -hmm. um, one, one is obviously you're buying, it's the government you're trading yes, with. Yes. Um, just touch on that again as we continue. So T-bills and bonds are securities issued by the government uh, for, for the, as a way of the government uh, raising money. So it's uh, government debt. Mm -hmm. And uh, the government gives a return on that. And uh, they're also risk-free. So there's no risk... Uh, from T bills and, and bonds. So basically, even if, if you if you're someone who does not love risk and you do not want to get any risk, you would go the T bill way. Mm. But with stocks, uh, pe people need to note that there's some risk involved because uh, it's market forces that drive the price. So there's no guaranteed return. Mm. But for T bills and bonds, mostly the government will have already declared the return upfront. Okay. Yes. All right. And. Earlier, you, you touched on being very um, informed yes. as far as how you invest in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a book that I was reading once that was saying the same thing, mm -hmm. that when you're investing, it's not about your emotions, yes. right? Yeah. Like, because a lot of us will do that. We'll mm -hmm. kind of, I always give the example of quail eggs, how mm -hmm. Kenyans like, right? Mm -hmm. But talk to us again about like, you as an investor, mm -hmm. what what you should be looking out for? Because like you're saying, it's not about the emotions. It's yes. not about just saying, well, but I think, you know, this is a good company. What yes. is informing that decision as mm -hmm. far as whether it's a good company mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. And so with that, you can talk to us about actually reading, you know, shareholder letters mm -hmm. or reading, you know, the balance statements and things. Like, there's a measure of research and understanding yes, that yes. actually needs to go in yes. to you being a good investor in a mm -hmm. company, true? Yeah. So uh, investors need to look at uh, annual reports. And mm -hmm. in the company's annual reports, you get the chairman's statement, you get the CEO's statement, where they give a brief outline of what the company has been doing the past year and uh, what the company plans to do in the future. You also need to be on the lookout for substantial news, any new products, new technology, new designs, whether the company is expanding. So watch the news, read the newspapers. Mm -hmm. You also need to look at the financials. Mm -hmm. uh, take, take time and go through the financials yourself. See the cost structure for the company. See the revenues. Know what drives the revenues for the company. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you will need to 
read research reports. Uh, various brokers have research analysts like myself who mm -hmm. release uh, reports on these companies. So read the go get go out and look for as many research reports as you can on, to know what the company is doing. Okay, that is how you keep yourself uh, informed. Right. Yes. Um, with stock markets, so I guess one thing could be, so you're an analyst, yes. um, but people can come to you and you'd sort of advise them. Yes. Um, there's something else called a money market fund. Mm -hmm. Tell us what that is. So a money market fund is, a, is a, an investment vehicle which acts like a pool, like a pool. So investors pull funds together. So you and your 5,000, another person with their 1,000, they pull the funds together. Then these funds are invested uh, in the money market, that is in, uh, in equities or in bonds. Okay. And uh, the fund gives a return, in, a return, which most of the time is uh, almost stable. So money market returns do not really fluctuate a lot. The, not as much as not the as stock yes, market. Not as much as the stock market. So when someone is going out to invest in the stock market, you have these options. Yes, you so have so these options. So far we're saying there's re just regular individual yeah, just, stocks. Yeah, yes. There's money market yes. funds, which are managed by someone. Yes, yes. So hopefully someone who's very experienced. Yes, and, yes. You know, that way they're able to On that guarantee. you also need to make sure that the person is, uh, is controlled by the CMA so that you make sure that your money does not get lost. Because there are rules on where the money should be put, how much should be put, that is in percentages. Mm. Yes. Mm. How important is it to diversify your stocks or your investments? Mm -hmm. We talk, I mean, specifically within the stock market. We talk mm -hmm. a lot about not putting your eggs in one basket, yes, right? Yes, yes. Does that apply even with the stock market? So, mm -hmm. you know, is it better to sort of concentrate on one industry and mm -hmm. say, you know what, the telcos are big, mm -hmm. that's all I'm going to do? Or should you kind of spread your wings a little bit, maybe do something in the food industry, mm -hmm. the telco industry, automobiles, mm -hmm. banks? You know, what would you suggest? I would suggest uh, diversifying. Of course, this uh, reduces your risk because if you concentrate on one sector and something big happens, like the rate cap for the banks, if you had bought all the banks at that time, of course, you would get losses in all your counters. Mm. So it is good to diversify, try manufacturing, agriculture, try telcos, diversify as much as you can mm -hmm. to, to widen your scope and uh, with that, you'll be safe, depending on, because we, as we've said, the market is driven by information. Right. So if something big hits this sector, you're protected in the other sector. Right, yeah. right. And the timing thing would still apply? Yes, the uh, timing also of, applies. Mm. Uh, like for banks, you need to be on the lookout. Uh, like when, before they just release the results that when you buy, because once they declare the dividend and you're buying, then you're buying at a higher price, so you're losing out. So just before banks start doing their quarterly yeah. whatever is that's yes, when you that's should be buying. Yes, you buy before the earnings release, and also you need to research and read a lot and on what the company is expecting for their earnings, yeah. and uh, there are also reports on earnings expectations by various analysts. Okay. So you also need to be on the lookout for that. Where is this information found? So for someone who maybe doesn't have a, and, and, and maybe that's even the question, is mm. it advisable to invest in the stock market without? a broker, is that the right word, or a, an, mm -hmm. an analyst, uh, an advisor? Mm -hmm. You know, just me as Joyce, Miende to Pekiango, is that advisable? Because it sounds like there's a lot of work to do. Yes, yes. You know, finding all that information, mm -hmm. where would I even get that? Does that mean I need to sit down and mm -hmm. like read the papers, you know, and they yes. put all the listings, mm -hmm. or Google people's websites? What would be, what would be the most efficient for just, you know, us as lay, <laughs> lay, lay people? I would say you need to talk to someone who has experience and uh, an expert in this. Mm -hmm. You do not w want to invest or put in your money in something you don't understand. Right. So if you're not willing to go the extra mile and get all these reports, uh, talk to your broker. Uh, they are basically salespeople, so they are very upfront with information. Right. Yes. And uh, But it is also good to take some time to read on your own, because after all, this is your money. So you need to protect yourself. But yeah. if you really are not someone who likes reading, talk to someone with market expert. <laughs> okay, we'll see you at review. Well, I want us to help out Brenda again. Okay, my dear Brenda. <laughs> Shout out to you, girl. Uh, she's the one who got conned, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But she had opened this account in April, mm -hmm. right? And up to now, there's like she hasn't been able to see any returns. Mm -hmm. At what point should you start worrying? I know you said... Um, give it a year, yeah. but 
should you sort of be seeing any sort of movement? Are there any like trajectories? Mm -hmm. Or is it just, you know, going to stay quiet and then within a year, if you've not made anything, then you call it quits? Or at what point should you be concerned? Should she be worried right now? She should be worried, given that already uh, her money is at stake. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you're buying a stock, you of course have an investment goal. So maybe, actually, well, I, I like to give the T-bills as a, as, a, as a basic return. So if the T-bills are at 7%, you at least need to get something higher than 7%. Because oh. after all, this is riskless. This is riskless. So if you put in your money in the T-bills, there's no risk involved. That's a great point. So yeah. at least observe and make sure that if you're putting your money where there is risk that is in, in shares, you need to get something higher Over than the T-bill rate. So okay. if, if, you s if you observe and see that uh, maybe you bought a company, something substantial has happened, or maybe they are making losses, uh, they are not keeping up with competition, and you have lost your money, you also need to ask yourself, how much can I really absorb? Yeah. So determine the amount of loss that you think you could absorb. So <laughs> once this amount of loss has been reached, it's called a stop-loss limit price, uh, then you just exit and accept that... Uh, you, it's time to it's just time exit. To go. And just I think that's a them. really good point, though. And yes. I, I think especially for those who are not too familiar with, you know, how to trade, yeah. that's a very good pointer. That yeah. if your broker is there telling you, you know, you're going to earn 3% or 4%, yes, yes. you need to be like, something you know. is off here. Because yeah. if the T-bill alone, which you can put your money away for a year, will give you 7% in a year, yes, yes. then that's a big problem. And yes. I think you can apply that to even your savings groups, mm -hmm. right? So... Uh, many of you are in a chama. Maybe you sit down and calculate, you know, what is the actual interest I have gained in this thing over the last year, right? If it's less than that 7%, yeah. maybe you need to <laughs> quit that chama and take your money to a T-bill where you know at least it's a bit more secure. Yeah. And if you're looking for a higher return, you'll get it there. Yeah. But of course, you know, a chama is also about social networking yes, and yes. helping your neighbors and whatnot. But if you're just looking for a bigger return, that's a good pointer for yes. us all to take. Yes. So at least if they are not going to research everything else about the company's shareholders and whatnot, at least know what is the T-bill rate, rate at yes. the moment. That yes. would be a great pointer. Thank yeah. you so much for that. I feel like I'm a little more empowered with that uh, particular pointer. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate you coming.